Good um, afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the, uh, our webinar this lunchtime. Um, I can see participants coming in, so this is really great. Uh, my name is Stephen Flower, and I'll be the host and also presenter um, uh, during during this with, with, with two other colleagues. We're just going to wait a couple of minutes, as we always do, for for people to arrive and get comfortable. So um, there'll be some mood, mood music to help us through this this awkward minute or two. Uh, we have John with us from the Cooperative of, of, of Comedians. You, there could be we, we've missed an opportunity here, John, for some some warm up, some some yeah yeah. I, joke. I, I tell us a joke, John. Do that. Yeah, yeah, tell us a, go, a joke about co-ops. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just waiting for the sign uh, that that we're ready to go, and we'll be here for one hour. We have a. Uh, some information from Co-ops UK about co-ops, and then three three presentations from 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 colleagues that have, uh, are in co-ops and were freelancers or, or a mixture of those, and then we should have time for questions and such as well. So, um, just to note, if you do have questions, it'd be great if you could pop them in the chat, or um, and we and we can see them, and then we we should have time later on, um, towards the end, to to, to discuss and, and 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 interact. Okay. So I think we're ready to go. I'm just looking for the sign from from Jennifer. Yeah. We're, good, we're good to go. Thank yeah. you. All right. So um, welcome. Uh, sorry. Uh, so today's uh, session is about um, uh, freelancers uniting and and um, how uh, co-ops, the cooperative model, can can uh, can help with that. And so, as I say, we've got three organisations sharing their stories. Uh, and then uh, before we do that, we wanted to. Um, just introduce those three people. So my name is Stephen Flower. Uh, I'm from Open Data Services. Um, we are a worker cooperative um, that um, we, we were freelancers and, and joined together to form a company uh, eight years ago now. Uh, alongside myself, we have uh, John Gibson. I think John, the spotlight is on you to wave and say hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. And John's from Felt Nout Productions. Uh, that's a co-op of stand-up comedians in the northeast of England. And we were together on this webinar last year, John, I think, and John said that my jokes were funnier. So we'll see. We'll see about that. And also with us today, uh, Melissa McNabb. And I think, yeah, spotlight on Melissa. I'd say hello. I think. Hi, Hi Melissa. Uh, and Melissa's from uh, a director of Code Operative, uh, uh, a co-op of freelance software developers, uh, also based in the Northeast, same part of the world as John and Felt Mount. Um, so, the, so us three, we're going to talk to, talk about our stories, uh, about, about our situations as freelancers, and then joining and forming uh, types of cooperatives. And um, we wanted just to start off with it, just to highlight that if you are thinking about this, some some context, some information about cooperatives and the support out there to to start your own, perhaps. So um, you might be asking, okay, but what what is a cooperative? And um, uh, a co-op is a, it's a, an organization or a business that's owned and controlled by its members. So uh, that, that's common to all the stories that we'll talk to about today, that those that are uh, working or, or, or part of the business own it as well. There's no external uh, owner of the, of the organization. But that, 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 that type of, uh, th those type of members could be the customers, could be the employees, as in, as in our case, um, but it could be local residents forming a co-op or even suppliers or or, or consortia that form a co-op. So th there's many different models to it. Uh, and as we can see, there could be um, um, pubs, energy suppliers, taxi firms, bookshops, farmers, sports clubs, and like ourselves, software companies, and as we hear from John, comedians as well. And there are uh, over 7,000 co-ops in the UK, and they contribute a, a healthy 40 billion, um, at least, to the, to the economy. Uh, and as as I said, members, the members of a co-op are the real a real key to that. So um, they're the foundation of a co-op. They're why they exist, and um, the members drive the mission, the purpose, the the delivery of the co-op. And they choose to do what to do with the profits, either share them with members or or not, or keep them within the the organisation. Uh, the members are the shareholders. There there are no, as I said before, no external shareholders uh, within a co-op. Um, 
and a co-op can exist to benefit the community but can also exist just to just to, to be a business that is shared amongst amongst its members it doesn't have to be a certain way but uh, the, the key bit and uh, the, the bits that i think we might talk about this afternoon are that members always have an equal say and uh, that, that requires a bit of effort and time to, to make those things happen um and for freelancers thinking about those uh, you know contractors or freelancers or people who work across many different projects for example uh, they're, they're, they're around four million uh, of those types of people self-employed people in the uk and so the idea of coming together to form an organization like a cooperative um, is very interesting um, benefits of working remotely uh, sorry as freelancers and consultants we we can probably say you know lots of freedom and flexibility but then the challenge is uh, working from contract to contract and maybe contracts uh, between contracts there's a there's a gap for example uh, which might mean unstable income and then such protections of uh, pensions and payroll and paid holiday and paid sick leave should that uh, unfortunately happen uh, are things that might not always come with working as, as a freelancer so again the, the ideas of forming organizations can can bring some of those benefits so forming a co-op uh, we'll 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 explore and illustrate hopefully some of these things that are uh, 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 here, here today but some of the things that uh, really help when, 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 when people join together to form such things are sharing the resources and the the overheads and, and such uh, new opportunities, gaining support from one another, um, seeking bigger, fairer, more equitable work, sharing the profits as we've talked about already, and then uh, perhaps you know in some cases beginning to understand what what could be done, what's the bigger bigger sum, what what more could we do as a group as opposed to just being individuals. So um, th there are lots of benefits, and I'm ho I'm hoping we can we can illustrate those through our examples th today. And um, there are two thing, two ways, um, perhaps two ways that you could join forces. But we might we might show a different ones today. So there's an idea, uh, a model of uh, a co-op of freelancers, where they share the ownership, profits, and operational duties, uh, but they remain their their own uh, entity, uh, their own uh, autonomy within within that that structure. Uh, so that's one model. Uh, another model that this is the one open data services, uh, our cooperative is which is where we form a new organization, a, a business, a limited company, and we become co-equal owners of the business. So uh, don't just think as a co-op of freelancers having one route. You, there, are, there are different ways. And of course, Co-ops UK can help can help you understand the options and, and support you with that. So uh, if you are interested now or at the end or, or tomorrow or next week, Co-ops UK is, is really the good place to start. It's where we started as co -op, uh, Open Data Services. Uh, they have lots of resources and we'll, and we'll touch on those at, towards the end of, the, of, the, of this afternoon's uh, webinar. Okay, that's the, a little intro about co-ops and freelancers and why and what for, but uh, let's get on to the, um, to the, to the real uh, side of things. So, uh, Melissa, I think you're gonna share your, your story um, from code operative. So I'm going to stop sharing and then pass to you. Can we? Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. I'm going to mute now. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, lovely. Great. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about code operative. Um, and as obviously we They've, they've mentioned where we're based in the northeast of England, uh, primarily Newcastle. Um, and our, I'm going to talk about our history, our structure, um, and all the way through to uh, different projects that we work on and participate in. Um, so, that's ourselves, you know. <clears throat> So Code Operative was uh, founded in 2018 by three freelancer members and by December 2019 there were six full members and 18 network members. Um, I joined in December 2019 starting our first piece of design work 
and I was made a full member in January 2020. We have lost some of our members, um, but we've gained a lot more. Um, and with some members obviously moving into other cooperatives, others starting their own businesses. And as of this month, 20, uh, February 2023, we are 10 full members and 30 network members. Um, we are a service cooperative and, you know, uh, we are, like I said, primarily based in the Northeast, um, but we are all over the country. That's the good thing about being freelance is you can kind of just be anywhere. So we also have members in London, Edinburgh, Wales and even Paris. Um, so our structure. Um, so we have network members and full members. Um, network members are members of Code Operatives Network. Um, they, they join our Discord server, usually after another network or full member invites them in. Um, they will have access to a couple of open channels on the server where they can talk to all members and apply for upcoming projects. They generally don't participate in um, organizational discussions. Um, however, full members are members of Code Operative that participate in projects as well as organizational and strateg strategic discussions. Um, we collaboratively have our, have our own say on how Code Operative functions and um, we also get full member benefits, so we have first priority over upcoming projects. We do have quite a unique payment structure. Um, so Code Operative makes 9.52% of profit from all projects. Um, we charge the client 5% for connecting them with freelancers um, and then handling all of the pre-project prep work. Um, and then the freelancer forfeits 5% of their day rate for using this service. That money then goes towards, uh, goes to Code Operative um, and we keep that to, to go towards day-to-day -day running costs. Um, paying for things like um, liability insurance, solicitors and account fees um, or paying our full members to do administrative tasks such as finding projects. Um, the other 95% of uh, the day rate goes directly to the freelancer for participating in those projects. Uh, we're quite young, so I'm just going to quickly go through our biggest achievements so far. Um, we survived COVID as a startup business, um, and a lot of our work uh, during lockdown came from COVID mutual aid funds, helping businesses to get online, partnering with charities to make sure that they could stay afloat while all shops were closed. Um, we recently won an award for Best Freelancers Network in the Northeast. And our recent, recent development project with the amazing charity uh, Give Your Best, um, it featured in Vogue, um, The Guardian and on Channel 4's Steph's Pat Lunch. The project consisted of us designing and developing a free e-commerce platform for refu refugee women to connect them with uh, pre-love clothes. The platform has connected almost 2,000 women and children with 10,000 pre-loved items since launching six months ago. So why freelance? Um, we enjoy the flexibility of being freelance, uh, being able to manage our own time and expectations, uh, whilst also benefiting from cooperating, bidding on bigger projects as a team and having the support of each other and what can be quite a solo stereotypical job. Um, we do a lot of lending into businesses, uh, filling, filling gaps within those businesses with freelancers. Um, our members benef then benefit from participating in projects that they want to within companies and having that extra layer of protection. And subsequently, the businesses we lend to, which are typically other cooperatives, uh, benefit from the lower day rate of a freelancer whilst also not having to hire for full time positions. Uh, it also means that the people we partner with can rely on us for having any type of skill. Uh, most people within the network have different skill sets. Myself, I'm a designer, project manager, and I look after our accounts and finance. 
Um, then we have people who can do React, React Native, WordPress. Um, there's no shortage of variety. And if we if we don't have what you're looking for, um, that 5% allows us to go out and find someone who can fill that gap. Um, so who do we work with? An example of lending into other cooperatives would be Cooperative Web. Um, so Coop Web are a Birmingham-based service cooperative, um, sorry, workers co-op, who provide technical solutions. Um, they contacted us for a React developer back in June last year, and ever since we've had a really great working relationship with them, um, where we help with any projects that they need extra capacity on. We currently have five people supporting Coop Web over several projects, um, who now list us as a trusted partner. Um, we're also the dedicated tech team for Digital Commons, who are a uh, newer cooperative and specialise in data-driven tools. They currently have three tools that we developed with different businesses and are now housed under the Digital Commons cooperative. So firstly, we've got Micromaps, um, which is formerly CMAP, and uh, we developed this with the Solidarity Economy Association, and it allows cooperatives and communities to visualise their connections with each other. Got Land Explorer, um, which we developed with shared assets and helps community development projects find information on land. And then we have Twine, um, which is a project that we picked up in phase two. And we originally developed this with Power to Change. This is a mobile app that allows businesses to track and analyze volunteer and visitor activity. So why a co-op and why cooperatives? Um, I think for us, especially being freelancers, we're averse to the whole typical man management structure. But the, the good thing about being freelance is that you're still on your, you are still your own boss, um, but by coming together, we're absolutely stronger. And um, yeah, I guess that's everything. So thank you. And um, that's me in case you want to get in contact. Thank you, Melissa. Um, that was that was really interesting. Thank you very much. Um, maybe just a question uh, about the, the 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 structure you have between full and network members. How do you um, how do you uh, keep people um, communicating together, for example, between a network and a full member and those two statuses? Is it... um, so we have a a Discord server. Um... And we have some channels that are shared and some, some that aren't. We have a lot of organizational uh, channels. Um, and we, we, just, we just post all the time. We talk to each other. Um, and then we do invite each other, uh, invite um, everyone to, to the AGM. So the network members are absolutely welcome to come to that, have their say if they want to talk about any issues that they've been having as network members um, without having to get them involved in the, like the traditional um, the traditional work, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the traditional strike. Sorry, I've lost my words. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah, we, we have, without having to bring them to the, the everyday running of um, meetings and all that kind of stuff. Thank you. Yeah, I know it's a, it's a challenge we have with open data services as well about, about you know, it, it, not everybody can be involved in everything all the time. So, so it's really interesting how you're structuring things. And some people don't other... want to either. Yeah, like oh, exactly. we do get freelancers who just don't want to. So yeah, yeah. And the other question I have before we bring John in was how did you get to the uh, 5.6%? Was it? Oh, the... 952 Oh, sorry. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's technically 10 and it, it confuses the life out of me, but it's because it's 5% from the client and you've already, that's already, that's 105%, isn't it? And then you would lose oh, okay. the extra 5%. It's very confusing, but yes. Okay. Thank you very much. And we'll, we'll have we'll have chance for questions, I'm sure, uh, towards towards the end after the, the next couple. Thank you, Melissa. That was really yes. helpful, really interesting. And congratulations for making it through COVID as a startup. Um, so I think we're going to pass to John now from Feltnout. I think if the spotlights change and John, you share your screen. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm John Gibson. I'm here from uh, Feltnow Productions, and I'm going to tell you about our journey to becoming a co-op. So this is what I'm going to go through. So who are Feltnow? Why do we exist? 
what do we do? Why are we a cooperative? Uh, talk a little bit about the cooperative hive and the benefits of working together. So who are Feltnout? Feltnout Productions are a not-for-profit cooperative of comedians from the northeast of England. Uh, and we are collaborating to create more comedy in, in the area. And ideally, that means more work for comedians. Uh, and as far as we know, the only uh, not-for-profit cooperative of comedians in the world. And why do we exist? Well, some of you with good memories will remember a little thing called COVID. And in 2020, COVID hit, lockdown happened. And what that meant was all of the uh, venues closed. And uh, I mean, even if you don't know that much about comedy, you know, venues play a key role in that. And so what we ended up doing, a few of us got together and started putting on online comedy gigs. And that worked really well. And we thought, you know what? We can do a lot more than that. So we, we looked at the problems as we saw it in the Northeast. And first of all, th there's very little comedy in the area. It is a bit of a, a comedy desert in the Northeast. We, which means that we've got increased travel expenses for comics because we've got to travel uh, more often than comics from other areas, for instance. And what that also means is that there's fewer events for audiences. So audiences are losing out as well. It also means it's difficult to develop new acts, new talent in the Northeast because there's very few places for them to develop. And we felt there was a lack of community engagement between comedy and the, the, the comedy uh, going audience of the Northeast. And overall, what that meant was it, the Northeast just wasn't a great place for comedy or comedians. So we set out to do a few things. So these are our, our major kind of strands, if you like, to felt out. We do comedy, we do outreach, we do heritage, and we are all about the members. So in terms of comedy, we do gigs. Uh, and very much we are focused on local gigs for local people uh, by local comedians. Uh, we do, um, the aim was to get more venues, more gigs going and work in with the community. Uh, we want to uh, work in with particularly working class, rural and disadvantaged communities, basically people who might not have access to, to comedy. Uh, to do outreach in the communities in terms of uh, workshops and charity gigs, we also want to celebrate the heritage of the Northeast comedy, uh, which we've got a lot of and promote that. And we also want to do things for our members. So basically give them those well-paying gigs, stop them having to travel as, of, as often, you know, put on new act nights so that they could, we could bring through the new talent. So why a cooperative? Well, th these are the things that we, you know, the main things that we want to do as a, as a cooperative, working together to transform the local comedy scene, uh, provide outreach for communities to deliver uh, the wider social impact and work together to develop the new talent coming through from the local area. Uh, but we wanted it to be owned and controlled by the comedians to generate sort of buy-in by having a, a membership fee. And we, one of the key things we wanted was we wanted it to be um, not about directors and people getting rich. It was very much uh, about comedians and the community. So if you uh, look at the, the cooperative uh, values and the cooperative principles. I'm not going to go through them all, but you can see uh, those, you can get them straight from the website. And there are certain things you'll see in here, like uh, demogra uh, democratic, um, and it has to be, you know, uh, independent and owned and controlled by the members and everybody contributes financially, et cetera. And we all cooperate. And we didn't do this at the time, but I've done it for the purposes of these slides. Uh, I've actually mapped what we what we set out to do against the the corporate values and the corporate principles and you'll see th th there's a fantastic correlation between what we set out to do and, and what being a co-op means so that meant we were a really great great fit for being a co-op uh, because we we matched almost everything um and like i say i didn't do that at the time but uh it, it's incredible how closely we matched to what cooperatives set out to do so we approached Cooperative Hive uh, and Cooperative Hive did a few things for us. So they provide us with support in understanding and complete financial forecast for getting started. They provide us with support on how to articulate and measure our social impact. Uh, and But mostly importantly, they provide us support in becoming a cooperative. 
And so what have we found as the benefits of working together? Well, we get to share our special skills in amongst the, the comedians that are professional comedians, but they're also semi-professional comedians with different skills. We've got skills in IT and PR and project management and production. And so we get to share those uh, amongst the community. We've got a Northeast brand now, Felt Nout, uh, is a brand and we've got uh, thousands of social media uh, followers now and we're getting really good coverage across um, across traditional media as well and we we get to support each other so we, we uh, volunteer to help out running gigs to social media accounts basically the whole running of the company uh, operates on on uh, volunteers at the moment and we get to do bigger contracts so for instance we've programmed a comedy tent for a music festival uh, we were commissioned by Tiny We Archives and Museums to create a series of podcasts, things that we just wouldn't have been able to be considered for as an individual that we could do because we were a co-op. And it's opened up new opportunities. So we got new comedy uh, venues, um, we got co community outreach sessions, and we're generating additional income for our members, which is you know one of the core reasons for, for being there. So how well have we done with that? Well, this is it broken down. So we've got, we've generated, this is in 2022. So last year we, we generated over 60,000 pounds of, of work for our, our members. We've given 70 acts in the Northeast uh, paid work across 18 venues, 120 ticketed gigs, over 2,000 tickets sold through our website. Uh, some venues sell their own um, tickets as well. We've uh, launched the Patreon. We've got 48 subscribers. So these are people giving us money just because they believe in what we're doing. Um, we've uh, launched 11 podcasts from members and we've given eight comedians last year their first ever paid spot. So we are seeing those, those new uh, talent come through. In terms of outreach, we secured £10,000 worth of funding. Uh, again, we, we couldn't necessarily have done that individually, but we, uh, as an organization, we, we were able to bid for that. So good, that equipment, which was microphones, speakers, lights, and basically everything we needed to produce a comedy in the box solution, as in it doesn't matter where your venue is or what your venue is. You don't need to have any fancy setup. We can bring comedy to your venue wherever. And obviously that opens up a whole new set of opportunities as well. Uh, we provided a full all-female lineup for the Time Theatre and Opera House charity event for Rape Crisis. That's the photograph you can see there. Um, so we did that because we've got the, you know, the pull across the uh, comedy community to do that. We started the podcast, as I mentioned. We, got, we did uh, 22 community workshops in terms of stand-up comedy and uh, giving people the experience of that. And we've got over 5,000 followers across our social media. In terms of heritage, as I mentioned, we were commissioned by Tiny Way Archives and Museums to create five podcasts on historical comedy characters, and we've done that. We celebrate the history of, um, of Northeast uh, comedians and comedy on social media, and we also give history talks on local comedians. And for members, well, we've got 57 members uh, of independent uh, comedians. We uh, provide the, the podcasting facilities for members, we are promoting members' podcasts across socials. We've got members trained in other disciplines, such as operating sound desks. We run a new act of the year competition for these guys. Um, the the stand-up comedy writing workshops we've provided to, to members and sketch writing workshops and new act nights so that we can develop people. We've uh, provided headshots to members, uh, professional headshots to use in promotional material, and we've loaned uh, we've run lots of local gigs, which reduce travel and hotel costs for members. And we also film in members shows so that they can promote them. So what have we found as the, as the benefits of uh, working together as a co-op? Well, we have more work. Uh, we generate more income for members, which is a fantastic thing. We've got more clout because we're operating together. Um, and that gives us more clout for doing things like making bids, et cetera. Uh, we've got a stronger brand. So, you know, comedy in the Northeast didn't have a brand. It's just lots of individuals doing their own thing. But now we've got a brand we can stand behind. And we're getting better PR because of that, because an individual comedian uh, launching something, it maybe isn't big news, but if it felt now gets behind it 
uh, we, we've got the contacts in the media and we've got a brand that we can put behind it to give people that PR that uh, they need. And the collective support, as I mentioned, sharing, volunteering, all of those things that help felt now productions be, you know, better than the sum of its parts. And that is everything from me. That's felt now productions. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Um, that's really great and interesting. Just as interesting. Thank you very much. I wanted to ask you um, as a follow up. Uh, we mentioned earlier uh, in, when we were talking before we started about the um, community interest company situation that you have. Yes. Uh, well, oftentimes, when, when I'm talking to people about co-ops, they think they think, "Oh, you are you a non non for profit?" And in our, our case, we're not a non for profit. We're we're not a non for profit. Yeah. <laughs> double negative. So, um, but you are. And I was just interested about like, how you see the alignment of a, a co-op and a non profit. In, the, in your particular circumstances. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that we were concerned about when we uh, when the initial group of us was starting the organization was that it would be seen by other comedians as some some way of sort of uh, skimming money off 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 people and, and sort of uh, being uh, nefarious in some way. So the the to combat that as well as being a cooperative so we could share um, you know, collective responsibility and decisions. We also wanted to make sure that um, any any money generated by Feltnout stayed within Feltnout and was either uh, provided as services back to back to the, um, the the members or was was used to fund uh, community events and other things that uh, would benefit comedians themselves. So it all basically gets plowed back into the members. Uh, at the end of the day and that's something that we were really right. keen on because we didn't want this to be seen as a, a sort of money grab by by individuals thank you thank you and um how do you we find this is quite quite a challenge really to as we grow and we get new members to explain and 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 support people in terms of what is a co-op and what does it mean to be part of a co-op do you do you mentioned about things you do with members do you do, you do much about actually you're in a co-op that means x y and z yeah and... A a absolutely so at, at the agm we, we did a little bit about uh what it means to be a co-op because it's also new to people mm. and and i think sometimes people need to hear those kind of messages more than once mm. because you know it is so new and it's different to what they are used to um uh so yeah we did that as part of the agm to make sure that people understood that you know the, the organization is theirs as members that that they had a say in it that they had you know could set the direction that could become directors etc okay great thank you and i have to ask has somebody done a cooperative uh, routine comedy routine yet? uh no i'm not aware of it and as you noticed i didn't either um <laughs> still no jokes in my presentation okay on, on that on that note thank you john on that bombshell <laughs> Um, uh, I will talk about uh, open data services now. Thank you, John, and, and and thank you, Melissa, before. And we're on good good timing, so um, we've got we've got time for me to share our story, and then um, and then we can have questions and such. So, can everybody see that? Uh, yeah, hopefully. So, um, I'm going to talk about open data services cooperative. Um, and um, we we are about using data to help uh, to measure change. Um, um, we've been around since 2015, and we started as four freelancers, four four people that came together to form a company, and we're now at 25 people. So we've grown steadily over the eight years um, in, 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 into where we are now. Um, and we've always worked from home, so we've always been freelancers that have worked on projects. And so when we came together eight years ago, before everybody was working at home, we, we, we've always worked from home. So we, we, that was an interesting time for us to explain both being a co-op and that we work from home. Now we just have to explain more about being a co-op. 
Um, and as I before, most of us were freelancers or contractors before we joined our co-op. Um, so we would we would all be picking up contracts, doing work, similar to perhaps how, how Melissa was explaining, and then we, we we formed this company of which we we joined. So now we we are we are both employees of the company, but also equal owners of the company. Uh, and we actually have our annual general meeting this afternoon after this webinar. Um, so we, we have some formality about that, being employees and the owners, and also some, some as I was talking to John, you know, some, some learning to have about what does it mean to be both these things and in a cooperative. Uh, we work on lots of initiatives with, with organisations, uh, particularly around transparency, uh, whether it's transparency of international aid or ownership of companies or contracts that are put out in the public domain. Um, uh, so we work with lots of initiatives that are trying to make uh, a change with data and, and we have very specialist skills that we support them with. So we work on lots of initiatives um, and we work with organizations such as the World Health Organization and the World Bank and um, a co-op called Equal Care uh, that, that, that has a very interesting model as well. So we work with lots of organizations on many initiatives and just to give you a, a very quick example um, of the type of people that we are, we are software developers and data analysts and business analysts, other types of analysts, quite techy in a sense, or quite 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 niche in other senses. So we 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 brought our skills together as a co-op to 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 try and do as we've seen this afternoon, have a, have a bigger impact. Um, but we all have very particular skills that we 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 use. Um, but we really value and enjoy working as teams together. So. An example is with an initiative called 360 Giving that's um, about uh, data on where the grants go, where the grants go, um, who, who gets the grants and where they're from in the UK. So we, with them, we, we help standardise the data about grants. That's the, the boring bit that we do. Uh, but then lots of organisations publish data about where their grants go. And so we built a search tool called GrantNav, which you you can find or we'll put a, I'll put a link in the in the chat you can search for grants so we're behind all that we're working with uh, the initiatives to make that that work and happen but as I say the, the value for us is working as a team uh, in, a, in a cooperative way I should say that in our world that we we inhabited before we formed the cooperative um, organizations like the World Bank or whatever else they're, 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 they're it's always set up for consultants we need a consultant to come and do this here's a short-term contract for another consultant and we, we often we all found that was quite a fragmented somewhat lonely existence you, you might be paid well or whatever but you, you know it's just looking for consultancies and and, and, and contracts from left all the time we've we've really worked hard over the years as well to try and change some of these into opportunities for co-ops as well so we've had some success for example with the world bank to say actually you would benefit from working with a a, 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 a cooperative of consultants than just a than a single one so so that's that's an interesting uh, evolvement of our of our work I think um, but yeah I think that the real thing that we we like to do is pool our skills all these different skills that we have these technical skills and we, we brought them together in 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 a, in a single organization uh, and and um, resilience has been a, a key word for us as well particularly in 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 the former times of the of the of COVID and such things where we we really did stick together through that so as I said before we're, we're lots of different technical skills in our cooperative and we all equally own the business and we have a share each. Um, what we've found over the years, but what we're really finding now as we get to a certain point is that all these things that we are, we also need all these other things. Um, uh, we've always had all these other things like getting money, paying each other, uh, governance, strategy, communications, trainings. But we're finding now we're at this sort of tipping point now where we might, we will need to employ people who do the, the business things, not just us specialists doing the business things. And I think it's a, it's been a really interesting pathway to get there. And, and uh, uh, I think we'll, we'll be advertising very soon for some of those people that, to, to run the business alongside our, our, our delivery of work. Um, so what are we learning from being a cooperative um, eight, eight years in? Um, well, I think there are three th themes that we, we really value. So one is having a shared understanding of, of what we're doing, what we're trying to work on, uh, but a shared understanding of what we want from, from being a business together. 
Um, and, and that's something we keep renewing and working on. It's not something you set on day one. Uh, as I was talking to John earlier early on, you know, we have people coming in all the time. And so we, we, we need to renew and understand our, our understandings. Um, the co-op should reflect what people need. So um, we have a very good uh, and very pro progressive uh, parental leave policy, for example. People can take quite a lot of time supported by the co-op off to, to look after the little ones. And um, that, that was a need that come through, came through from our, from our members. So we, we worked together to form a policy and, and make sure that would be right and relevant. So the co-op for us should reflect the needs of the people that own it. And uh, key to all this for us is, is having stability and sustainability. So uh, we have financial models and such things, and we're always looking at can we have, can we afford to do X, Y, and Z, or or can we afford to stretch and employ more people? So um, our cooperative wouldn't be anywhere if we didn't think about the sustainability of it. Somewhat obvious, some of these themes, but I think they're key to, to what we do. Um, to support those things, that we we have some some really key pillars that we've developed over the years. So um, I mentioned the policies around around parental leave, but many other policies we've de developed together as a cooperative. Uh, we have chosen to all get paid equally, so we all get paid the same, um, and then your your pay differs according to your full time full time employment status. But we have a, a flat wage; we all get paid the same. Uh, but we have, uh, alongside that, we, we're very flexible in how we work, um, that's supported by working from home, but also people's lives are different, so people can work flexibly. And key for us, I think there's another clue in the freelance bit there, that we everyone who works in our cooperative has a permanent contract. There's no fixed term or, or anything like that. You, you're employed by the cooperative, that's, your, that, that, that's, that's it. There's no... There's no uh, other alternatives. So we, we have these things that we think glue together our, our values. Um, we do also have, this was the joke, we have uh, eight years of vaguely awkward team photos, um, which are which we, 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 we love. Um, I don't know who this person is. This person isn't part of our, our cooperative. Maybe it might be one day, but I'm ad-libbing. <laughs> and we are going to be hiring very soon. So, um, as I mentioned, we're at this interesting point with our cooperative where we will be uh, recruiting people to help us run the business, not just deliver the work of the of the co-op. So, um, there'll be you can join a newsletter or check our, our website that might might come through, um, and um, and we'll be advertising very shortly for people. So, quarter two. That that that's our story about Open Data Services Cooperative. There's, there's quite a lot of support from Co-ops UK, um, and I think all three of our organisations have benefited from that. Certainly we, when we, when we started Open Data Services, we talked to Co-ops UK, they showed us some model rules and, and helped us form the, form the, the company, uh, and we really, really valued that. Um, oops. Um, so uh, Co-ops UK, they have, uh, first of all, have a look at their website. There are lots of resources there to help you understand what, what is a co-op, things we've discussed today, uh, some templates, some models, with some really interesting resources, but also um, this step-by-step -step tool to help you understand is, is a co-op model right for whatever context you want to, to work in. So uh, we would really recommend um, taking a look at that and, um, and, and running through the models and the, 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 the quizzes, it, wizards that they have to help, to help understand if the co-op is right for you. And um, there is also a, a package available through Co-ops UK in support, in support with the, the, the cooperative bank, um, up to 10 days of support to, uh, for, for, for people to understand um, their co-op or their development of their co-op and what are the needs and what are the support that you need. I think, John, you mentioned something around this with the, with the support you had from, the, for, from a programme about developing a, a, a business plan or a, a budget, for example, that, that might have helped you then of other things so um there are there's some really good support from co-ops uk um and please access that if you are uh, asking questions or thinking about co-ops because they're there to help we have now time for questions and i'm going to whilst, whilst we're doing that i'm going to look at the the chat but uh, john or melissa if you've got any other points you wanted to make something else you thought of whilst whilst presenting that would be great as a And I'll take a look at uh, I, just just to follow up on your point about the uh, support. Yeah, we got support with our, our business plan, which uh, nobody in the organisation had done before. So that was really invaluable. 
to to help us kick off on the right foot. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we we had we've had support with from Coops UK around um, very specific HR um, uh, things that we want to put in place. You know, and and uh, for example, I mentioned the parental leave policy. So Coops UK were really helpful to review that and to to talk us through what it is and what it means and such things. So yeah, yeah, totally. I don't know, Melissa, if you've had a, a, the su support from Coops UK or other organisations to help with your the forming and development of uh, of Code Operative at all. Yeah, I think it's quite similar to yourself, Stephen, um, and probably more towards the start, um, I think, before I was actually involved, so. Great, great, yeah, and there are, um, Coops UK, lots of videos and uh, uh, other things that are available, and I just noticed, well, I, yeah, this 15-minute consultation with the Cooperative Development Manager, what's, and she, what's that name, Jennifer? The Cooperative Development Manager, they, they can help people like evaluate if they're if they're if they're if the co-op is the right move for them. I think. Uh, I'm looking at the questions in chat, or if anyone has got any further questions and they want to put them in the chat, that would be really helpful. Um, so I'm, I'm looking. So it's, it's always a bit annoying when someone does this. I'm I'm working backwards and looking looking at the first one that looks like a, a question, but I'll try and get to others. So John asked, "Do you remain self-employed or employed by your co-op?" So I think there are three different answers from our experience there, uh, John. In our case, Open Data Services, uh, people become a member uh, a, 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 a member of staff. They're employed by the co-op. But equally, also they own the co-op. After after six months, they can choose to become a member, and then they own it. So in our case, you're you're you you're not self-employed; you're employed. But I think Melissa and John, you're you're slightly different. Yeah, so we are fully self-employed. Um, we all submit our self-assessments in January. Um, even the the, uh, the directors um, still self-employed. So. Yeah, and we're exactly the same. All self-employed freelancers. So you both use the the cooperative structure to to pool resources and and all the things we talked about, but your your remuneration and other things is 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 self employed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I've got there's another question here. Thanks for thanks to Coach for putting them in the chat. Uh, how do a co op model address issues around group dynamic group dynamics, conflict management, and leadership? Um, my response to that would be I don't I don't think I think. I think those are things that are common to many organisations and, and not 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 particular to co-ops, but I understand the, the, the point trying to be made there. So um, we work really hard on those things. Um, as I mentioned before, we've got our annual general meeting this afternoon, and it's maybe the 18th iteration of what an annual general meeting would be. Um, back in the early days, it was very, very formal, and, and we'd wear shirts. Now it's uh, shirts and jumpers and uh, many parts are interactive I suppose so I think I think you've got to work hard at those things and and one thing we do is we set a training budget for everybody everybody can spend a certain a certain amount of time a certain number of days training and often those trainings are organizational rather than technical uh John Melissa I don't know if you if you have any experience about how you address those yeah. common issues well um as you say I don't think they're necessarily uh exclusive to cooperatives um we haven't had to, to cross any of that but what I will say is because I, I am familiar with it if if that person is interested in that kind of thing I would uh, google transactional analysis which tells you about all the different ego states involved in um, in uh, a two-way conversation and can help with uh, conflict resolution and also the drama triangle is a really great <laughs> uh, video on uh, on YouTube for the drama triangle which will help you get out of um, uh, tight scripts We've been talking a lot about communication styles lately and that everyone has different one different style and that's where some some things come from so yeah and melissa have you so we uh, i think the important part for us is that like we we're always listening to our members and you know trying to address anything that might come up um we have worked very heavily with um outlandish who do offer font uh training um which is a form of conflict resolution um okay. and they're great and honestly we couldn't recommend them enough so and outlandish are also a cooperative yes yeah. yes they are thank you um i've got a uh, couple of other questions that i'm spotting here we are an sme limited company could we become a co-op and maintain our company structure um i think yes um 
in our case, we're a lim company limited by its shares. And then we, our articles that we've posted on Companies House describe us as a co-op and our rules. So we're a regular limited company. We all have one share each. And as I say, we have a then set of rules that describe us. But I think we, you know, it's not just the rules that are posted on Company House. It's how you act and interact and work together that that, that that's the, the the less tangible things. But I think the answer there is certainly if you're a limited company, you could become a co-op because it's it's more of a, a shift in in model than a legal thing. But I don't know if John or Melissa, you've got any further advice there? No, not for me. I think I think you've covered it. Yeah, I'd say the same. Um, we're not much different. We're also a limited company, but by guarantee, not by shares. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kim asked, I'm a, finan a financial PR. I think it'd be great to work with other sport and backup and heft. Would a co-op model work for that? So I think I think our story illustrates that, yeah. Uh, you know, those the, working with people in the similar area or or complementary skills, it, it really, it really does it really can work. It doesn't work automatic automatically. It takes takes work to do so. But I think um, a co-op model could could be right. Don't take my advice, but uh, hopefully, Kim, that is that is true. Uh, John, Melissa, I don't know if you, I think I think your, both your stories illustrate that point as well. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about that. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm just seeing if there are any more. There are the two more messages at the at the end. Um, so. And uh, Angarad, um, I'm a musician and relate to the, the one for you, John. Here, really relate to the felt now story of needing to build up a local infrastructure. How possible is forming a co op? Of course, yeah. different, yeah. How possible is I, it? I'd well, yeah, I'd, I can totally see uh, how this relates actually. So, just to kind of relate it back to the question, so it's, it's a question around um, musicians and forming a, a co op. Uh, and being at different levels or at their careers and across different fields. So if you uh, think about it, actually, that's very similar to, to the comics. You know, we have comics who are uh, full-time comics, who uh, some of which, you know, uh, get television work, et cetera, uh, all the way through to, I mean, the eagle-eyed amongst you would have spotted uh, Lost Voice Guy on, on my slides. Um, so you know we have we have people right through from there right down to you know newly starting in comedy and just dipping their toe in the water and essentially the way it works for us is that uh we have people who book the comedy gigs and they um apply their knowledge of the person's skill set and level to forming the 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 number of acts and the type of acts that would be appropriate for a particular gig. So that's how we handle it in the comedy world. But it's definitely possible because we do it. Thank you, uh, Anger. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, John. And uh, uh, the, a couple of other questions I see here as well now. Uh, thanks to Coach UK for highlighting them. Uh, Natalia asking, do you have a non-complete clause in your regulation or policies for regular members? Um, so I think that means perhaps in in the in 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 the co so cooperative, for example, has is that a thing where where freelancers compete for the same work outside of the co-op, for example, or or do you have do you have an agreement with that? And 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 Natalia asks, how does that get explained? If so, or, or how do people think about that? I think maybe it might be. So obviously there is nothing stopping a freelancer going out and bidding for the same work that we're doing. Um, but we all care about each other. So we're not, I don't think it's, it's just a general rule. I think we're not going to go out and do that. Um, our, our members guides quite slim. Uh, we are actually in the, in the process of, um, of re looking at that and having a look at all the kind of stuff that's in there. Um, but we just find that obviously most people who are participating are kind enough and you know happy enough to to bid for it as code operative so thank you yeah could, could i just add on to that so from our point of view it's exactly the same but actually what we're finding is that individual members may get approached about other work and sometimes they'll just point them in the direction of felt now and say well if, if you want to have that comedy night just go and talk to felt now and they'll sort it out for you um so we're actually finding that the the members are um basically gathering extra work 
for Feltnout as well as for themselves. So some things they might do individually and some things they might say, actually, that's a bit beyond what I'm either willing or able to do and point them to Feltnout to sort it out. Thank you. Uh, uh, this, I don't think this applies to us. A, a spin on this one, though, is that we, when we lose members of staff, we often lose them to kind of clients that, that we have um, or, or, or to governments uh, or, or, or civil, the civil service. And um, I think that's because they see how, how, how people flourish within a co-op and they, 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 they see uh, that, that those people are that move on to bigger organizations that are less cooperative in their nature, perhaps. But um, we don't have any, any um, sort of non-complete clause saying that you can't go and work for a client or somebody you've worked with. It's, we welcome that. We think it's, I think it's great. OK, I've got the last question here, I think. Um, um, can co-ops function beyond freelancers, such as an SME, uh, such as SME organizations seeking a collegiate approach? So I think the answer that there might be in terms of organizations working together as cooperative, which is certainly possible, and there are models that Co-ops UK know of and examples of that, um, where, where so it's not just freelancers, but organizations in a, in a, a collective, uh, for example. And I don't know if John, Melissa, you've got any examples or where you have members that, have, that, were, that were companies themselves, for example? I don't have any uh, examples. We do have members who have their own company, but obviously that's completely separate from okay. the, their interactions with Feltnout. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the same for us. Like we have members who who are obviously like their own registered business. Mm. Um, I'm not sure if it's relevant, but obviously as code operative, we're also part of things like Cotec, which is a load of cooperatives all sort of, um, coming together under one, I'm, I'm sure you're part of it, aren't you, Steve? We are. Yes, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, exactly that. Yeah, yeah. So we do, we do, we, we do join other co-ops, I think. Is the, thank you, Melissa. That's, that's, that's the point that I, I completely forgot about. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, hopefully that answers the question there or starts to, and I think Co-ops UK would be really helpful there. Um, Okay, last point. We've got one more minute. Wouldn't it be good for Co-ops UK to have a co wanted pool to bring together like-minded people? I'm sure it would be, and I think it is, and Co-ops UK can, can do those types of things, I think. So, excellent. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure we finish on time now. So, uh, thank you for all your questions, and uh, hopefully we, uh, my colleagues answered them better than I did, but uh, thank you, uh, Melissa. For, for your your input and your presentation and great to hear the story thank you uh, again john because uh, we were together last year uh for your for your story thank you for everybody uh thanks to corps uk uh, for hosting us and thanks to the cooperative bank for the support that they're offering as well so i think with that we i don't know what we do we say goodbye thank you <laughs> have a good afternoon i've got to go to an agm now so um uh i'll keep my shirt on Okay, thank you everybody uh, and have a good afternoon or morning or wherever you are. Thank you.